So thanks, Jerry, for passing it off to me, your beautiful bird of paradise. So we're going to finish up the bird of paradise in this tutorial. And this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be really fun. There's lots of coloring techniques and we can't wait to see yours. So stay tuned. Here we go. So welcome to the second part of our Bird of Paradise series. So um, going along with Jerry, you probably got to about this level. And what we want to do is thicken up the stem and we also wanna make the stem a little bit longer. So I just have a couple of stems. These are 18 gauge, or maybe 16 gauge um, covered wires. And I'm just gonna build it by adding some on here to make it longer. And because it's a heavy, bloom it's so tall I want to add quite a bit of structure in there so I just have a random piece of crepe paper here I'm just gonna cut this is such a state stately beautiful bloom I think it's gonna be really pretty when you're all done we can't wait to see yours so I'm just adding a little bit of glue on my And I'm going to add the first one. Actually, this one already has two on it. So um, I'll start when I get down to about, you know, just a couple more inches, I'll start adding more. So I'm just gonna start by, and, and part of this is a process to build up the stem as well. Come down to here, I'll add one in. And I'll actually want two. And it's okay that that's sticking out because we're gonna come back to it. And yeah, see, that's about as long as the one I did in the sample, so. So this is just to start getting that stem built up so that we have a really thick, bulky stem. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to need another piece, probably about that long. There we go. And let's see. I think, I think it's going to be strong enough. So what I want to do is just cover the rest of it. And you can make yours as long or as short as you want. Um, I think it'd be really pretty to do it tall. So I'm gonna go up to the, I get to the end, and then I'm gonna cover, come back down just to create a little more bulk, finish off the bottom of that stem. And like I said, you can use any scraps or whatever that you have for this. Needs a little more glue, although we're gonna cover it up. Right there in the bottom, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is I have some strips of paper towel here, and I'm gonna build it up so that it looks like this. So I'm just gonna grab a couple of these. And just, just dot some glue on it there so it'll stick a little. And I'm just gonna start right here up the top and just start. And you'll probably need about four or five paper towels to do this, depending on how thick they are. And I'm using those ones that come in like half sheets. pick up where I left off and just come down at a 45 degree angle. So just take a paper towel and cut it lengthwise a couple of times. 
on those half size sheets, I cut it into four. And we're just gonna pick up where we left off. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just come down again and start another row. And we'll come down, we'll catch that bottom on the next go round. Oops. There we go. Okay, so we're just gonna keep wrapping. So um this is two layers up here. I think you're gonna need three layers to do that. Okay, so why, why don't you finish wrapping yours, I'll finish wrapping mine, and then we'll come back and we'll move on from there. Thanks so much. Okay, so we're back and I wrapped my stem. I actually wrapped it four times. And we're gonna wrap it actually two more times. So I have a fold of um, green doublet here. And I'm just gonna cut a piece off of here that I'm gonna use for my stem wrap and it's kind of wonky the way it's shaped, but it doesn't matter. So I'd like the lighter green, the same green that we used on the beak. And I want everything to match and nobody's gonna see this either. So it's not crucial. Give it a big, bit of a stretch. Okay, and we're gonna just dab some glue all across and more on the ends. I always dab a couple more on the ends. So we're gonna start wrapping this and we're gonna start up here. And then come down. Don't want that there. The piece that sticks out there. I don't know why that's there. We go. And this is just gonna kind of tighten up all of this that we did underneath so that it gives us a nice smooth finish. And like I said, this piece isn't gonna show. We're gonna put more on there. But it's just to kind of corral the paper towel. Take some more. Take the other half. I'm gonna put some glue on here. hope you've been staying safe, surviving the stay in place, shelter in place. I'm in California and uh, we're, we are the most populous state. So we have all the problems that, go, that comes along with that. But um, we've been good. I think everybody in our, that surround us are good. We have our, our pod of people, um, our next door neighbors on either side of us that we spend time with. So we haven't been entirely alone and our governor has actually recommended the pod approach. But the, the catch is you can only be in one pod and um, everybody has to kind of stay on the same wavelength. About that long. Start there. I think if you cut your strips up into manageable pieces, it just makes everything go smoother. And I know that when we get to the coloring part, we're gonna have a blast. I actually have a real, a fresh cut um, 
Bird of Paradise on my table, which I will show you when we get to the coloring parts. Um, it's it's one that's kind of dried out and seen better days, but um, it does have some really, really pretty coloring on it. So see, all we're doing is just kind of smoothing this out a little bit. Just to kind of corral everything. Again, I hope there's not too many shadows in this. It is late in the day, so I don't have the shadow here. My window faces southwest, or mostly west, I guess. West, southwest. So it's that time of the day that we get those shadows. So I'm just going to finish wrapping this and then we're gonna move on to, and it doesn't have to be perfect. So if you have a little gaps in there, it's perfectly fine. I just wanna get this down around the bottom here because we are gonna wrap this again. I just wanted to kind of get that wrap started. Get a little glue in there. Okay. So let me grab my specimen. And um, you can see by this specimen that, that this piece comes up here and then it comes down and then it's got another piece of crosses here and, then it, and they're opposite each other. So this part goes out this way, this one goes out this way, out this way, and out that way. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I cut a piece of, for the top, a piece of green doublette. That is, grab a ruler. For me, it's about six and a half, almost seven inches, which is fine. And it's about a little over two inches wide. And what we're trying to do is create this neck here. So, um, you know, I think what I want to do too is wrap this little neater. So let's grab a little more. I want everything to be as neat as possible. even though we're gonna cover up some of it. You'll know. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here. I'm just gonna wrap this nicely around there. There we go. Give us a neater effect. So I've got this piece and I've I've um, cupped it here. And then I took my scissors and curled it out here just that way so that it'll stick straight up from there. And we're gonna take it and apply it. Let's do it this way. There. A little bit. I want it to come right up like that, and then I want these to overlap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bead of glue here. Get that on, and I'm going to put a bead of glue here on each side before we come up to that point. So, and you just want to leave a couple inches, and you know you're going to have to eyeball this one. I think to hold it, stick a little more glue in here. There. And we're just going to lay it on there. And we're gonna lay this down as smoothly as we can. 
bring this one over. And it could be there. Need some more glue right along there. So we want to kind of push this in just a little. So I'm going to add a little glue right in to the inside there. And we're going to pull it in like that. So you can see from both sides how that is. Okay. So then I took another piece of doublet. In fact, I can take what's left here. This is about seven and a half inches. And I'm gonna cut a piece a little over two inches. I can show you with a ruler. Yeah, probably about two and a quarter inches. And we're gonna cut this. This is how I cut that top piece as well. Because we want it to have that swirly effect to it, I'm going to come down, go straight down, and then curve it out, and then come down. Let's see how this looks. I want this one to be on this side. Yeah. And you know what? Oh, it's just wide enough, just enough to go around. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that up, back off, move this out of the way, get rid of my scraps, and I'm going to do the same thing here that I did on the top one. I'm going to give it a little bit of a scissor curl. Then I'm going to add I think I need to get a new glue bottle. Bead of glue along the sides, and I'm going to put some in the center here just to help hold it in place. Remember, less is more. I'm a more is more kind of girl, but less is more when it comes to glue. So I'm going to lay this down where I'd like it to be so that it comes below the B. I need it to be a little higher. There. Make it straight. I'm just going to pull that around. Make it nice and smooth and pull this one over on it too. Want it to be nice and smooth. And you know what? Oh, that's good. That's good. There we go. We'll get that nice and smooth. Let that glue get in there. Okay, we're going to cut another one. Make sure when you cut it, it's enough to go around your what you've got. So we're going to do the same thing we just did. I'm going to cut, give it a nice furrowy edge here, and then down. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to cup it. I forgot to tell you that I cupped that last one. Okay, we're gonna cup it. Then we're gonna put it in place just to see how it looks. See how we want it. Okay. And we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Sorry if my head's in the way. Random glue here and some glue here. Not doing a very good job. There we go. Okay. So we want it to sit on that side. So we're gonna lay this down. See, we've got this this piece here, this piece here, 
and I'm going to come down as far as I can. I'm going to get coverage there. Uh oh, you know what? I made a mistake. Just to show you, things happen to everybody. Let's get rid of that piece. It was the wrong, I had the wrong side out. So let's do that one again. And then we'll come back up. We just want this to be high enough that it's going to come around and cover what you've got there. And just glue that down on one side and bring the other side around. Actually, this one just wants more glue. And there we go. And this is going to want more glue too. Bring it and wrap it around. Make it nice and snug. Mm -hmm. It could be more snug. There we go. Let's loosen this up. And wrap it around so it's nice and tight. There we go. So we've got this one here. Okay. We're going to do that again. Can't use that piece, so I'll do it one more time. We're probably going to do it. Actually, I have one here that I cut that's longer that just might be long enough to get us to the bottom. No, that's going to be too small. So, cut another one. And we're going to cut this one. I'll line that up a little better. There we go. And cut it with a Do the same thing. Let's see which side's it. Okay. Cut it a little bit. Scissor curl that back. Okay. Let's do a dry run here. I want this one to be here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to wrap that around like that. So we're good on the dry run. So let's add some glue here. It won't lay flat. Some random pieces. Okay. We're in the home stretch here. So our last one ended here, and we want this one to sit just like this. Okay. I'll make it flat. One more. I'm going to take one side. And lay it down nice and tight. I'm going to pull the other side right over it. I think this one wants a little more glue. Just this isn't going to show, so I just want to shove a little glue in there. Having a tough time here today. There we go. Just roll that in and then bring this one over. Okay, and we have one more to do. Do the same thing. It's gonna have to 
little swirly kind of thing on the end and then just go straight down. We'll probably be cutting some of this off of here. Okay, let's do a dry run. And I want this one to be the last ones out this way. This one to come out just a little. And this one's going to go here. It's kind of off center a little, but that's okay. There we go. I want that one to go there. And it's just going to hit the bottom of the, of the stem. You, and you can cut it off and wrap that bottom, which is probably what we'll do. Same thing we did before. We pull one side over, nice and smooth, tight. And then pull this one over this way. There we go. You know what I would do here at the bottom, we want to kind of finish that off a little bit. So I'm going to grab a strip of, yeah, I got a small strip here, small strip of the doublet. And I'm just going to wrap the bottom part of this very neatly. If somebody comes up with a better technique to doing this, I would love to hear it. So in this case, oops, I'm just going to come a couple of inches down here and I'm going to wrap this around. Okay, so we've got that done. I know it looks this one looks a lot different than the one that I showed in the video. And we're going to turn this one into this one, but better. So um, finish up, finish wrapping your stem. And when you come back and I come back, we will continue on with, um, we'll start coloring. So thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you on our next part. Okay, so welcome back. We have come to the fun part of this video. Um, this is a specimen that I um, pulled out of my neighbor's yard or she pulled out of her yard for me. So I want to kind of do coloring like that. So here's my beak and um, we're going to start with coloring the feathers. And I have, I just want to, oh, I need to get one more color here. Um, oh no, I don't, I'm good orange. So um, I'm going to color these, these, um, and if, whether you do or not is entirely up to you. Um, if you want to change the color on them, I like them a little brighter. So I'm going to show you what I did on mine. So I'm just going to pull all these feathers back and just do them one at a time. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is add in a little bit of orange on these. because I'm going to really brighten them up because they are bright orange like this on your typical. And then I'm going to put in some orange in here, red in here. So the colors I'm using are orange and permanent red. Um, so I'm just going to keep lightening. So this gets all blended together. So now I'm going to do the other side, pull them all apart there, get some orange on it and a little bit of red. So I'm doing the red 
primarily towards the bottom and then coming up and blending it all in at the top. There, that's one. Let's go to the next one. Get the orange. And you, you, it's up to you how much you color, if you want to even color at all. Um, we're trying to make these as close to realistic as we can. So you would expect nothing less from us, I hope. Okay, next one. Orange. Get a little red in there. Come back in with the orange. And just feather it out, so to speak. To the other side. Get a little red down in there. Or get orange first. Sorry, I'm trying to get this close to me to look at it. And I'm forgetting about you, so I gotta do that. Here we go. Pull these back a little bit. There. Okay. The blue one we're not gonna do. Come to the next yellow. We'll do the same thing. And I really like these blender brushes for this. They um, just really get the color into the paper really nicely. Did I do the other side of that one? Yep. Get some orange down in there. Red in there. To the other side. Red in there. And some orange. So we'll just keep going. And if you look at the um, the natural ones, their their feathers just go every which way. So I'm going to try to emulate some of that in how we color this. And nothing in nature is solid color. You know, you'll see little nuance, even on an all white flower, you'll still, still see some nuances of color on it. And just keep going and like I said you can do this part or not it's entirely up to you um, Jerry did a great job in uh, guiding us through the first part it's um kind of funny how we do this um, when we pick our flower challenge and I hope you'll attend our monthly makers meetings we talk about all things paper flowers and just basically it's like it's like having breakfast or having coffee with your best friend you know we're just talking to each other having a good time um it's how you get to know everyone and um when we're at the makers meeting we choose not the next month's flower but the second one so we have already chosen the august flower and um you're going to be excited, I think, about that one. It's something I'm excited about making. So that's how we decide. And then Jerry and I, we start out with Inga, and Inga's just too busy to, to do this. And um, here, so let's, I'll, I'll get back to that. I'll get, I'll get back to my story there a little bit. So we're just going to basically take these and let them kind of go cattywampus. And we might decide to come back in and um, do some more coloring. But let's just kind of get started on here. And I think that looks really cool. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to emulate this color on here. So you can see you got this pink up here and we got the red there, so we're good there. And then there's yellow here and this is like blue. So, 
I have it. I could use the same brush for that matter. Um, I'm going to come in. So these are the colors I have. So um, I will use the Hansa yellow tint and the bright yellow green. Um, I'll use the permanent tint red. This is ultramarine blue. I'll set these aside. I may use a little bit of this one. And then I just have a blender here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down some of this pink. You can see there's lots of pink in here. And all we're going to do to start is just lay down some color. Just to get some color on the paper. And you'll probably have to hold this piece up here to get it to comply. And like I said before, these blender brushes just make all the difference in the world. It allows you to um, really get the color into the paper. So I'm going to take some of this red and I'm going to hit it down the top. So we're just going to get some on the brush and just bring it down. Just on both sides. Don't forget to do both sides. And, and it's okay if you, you know, if it's uneven, it doesn't matter. We're going to come in and you're going to blend the heck out of it. So the next color we have is we have this yellow here. And I'm using this Hansa yellow for that. And um, it kind of comes down this way. And like I said, we're just laying down color here. I have a yellow that's a little yellow. Oh, and I wanted to tell you that you don't have to use pan pastels for this. Oops. Use whatever you have. There we go. I'm a firm believer in using what you have. I want this to be brighter up here. There we go, now we're getting it. Now we're cooking with gas. And I wanna get some of this yellow over here. And now we're gonna kinda of bring in some of that blue. And we've got it here, here. And around to the other side. I hope I'm not sticking my head in, in your face and you're not just seeing my head. Some blue. So we're going to come in and blend this a little. I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow just to blend those colors together. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Can't tell you how pretty it is. I don't know if it shows up on camera. Oh, so I started to talk about the, the blender brushes. Um, I think if you're going to if you're going to invest in pan pastels, invest in some blender brushes too. The the way that they um, get the paper the color into the paper is just amazing to me, and and it really does get in the paper. So we've got a lot of pink here and maybe some red up in here. I'm going to get a little red stripey going up there. There we go. And a little more red and pink in here. Pink cheeks. More over here. And don't worry about it. We're going to blend all this in. Come in with the yellow here. And I know some people may be afraid of laying down a lot of color like this. But it's pretty forgiving. It really is. So you can see that this stays kind of orangey red up here at the top. And then it goes down into like a yellowy kind of color. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of these yellows and bring it down. And then just keep blending it all in. And a little more red up here.
I hope you're seeing this because I have to tell you, I'm super pleased. So then we go down into some greens there. So we're going to come down into this next green, this next, uh, I don't know what you call this, um, part of the stem. And then the next section, bring that green down here. And we'll just keep going. And you can decide how far down you want to go. This gets green, greener as we go down. So just adding it in. So we want to make this a little more yellow here. There we go. Same thing here. I'm going to sneeze. Achoo. Achoo. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have allergies so bad. I apologize. And then I'm going to bring this blue in here to blend a little more. Because the blue is pretty evident on the on the real one. So there we go. Um, I just want these to be a little raggy here. And I'll just bring some of this yellow, this green down the stem just to make it all blend in really well. So just keep blending with your blend brush and you are going to want to use a fixative on this. We are, I use a Krylon UV protectant um, because if you don't, this color is just going to keep coming off on you. Um, and you don't want that, certainly. I think, uh -huh, I think we are, oh my gosh, we are so close. The only difference is my feathers go more up than up than uh, these ones go back more. And again, so you can see it from the front, you want these to go wonky. Because they do in a real plant. I mean, they're, they're done something. You can see some are going that way, some are going that way. So there we have it. There is the coloring on the Bird of Paradise. And I hope you can see this color. I'm going to take try to take a good picture with it. Um, but it's just um, stunning to see. I think it looks an awful lot like the real deal. So I will take this and spray some Krylon on it. I'll take, do it outside. Don't do it in the house. I will go outside and spray some Krylon on this. Um, and I think I think we're good to go here on this part. The next part uh, is gonna be some leaves. So we'll get going on that and we'll continue to play with this. So thanks so much for joining me. Jerry did an awesome job showing us how to put this together. And I'm just pleased that I was able to, to replicate a little bit of what the real, a fresh cut, Bird of Paradise looks, looks like. So thanks so much for joining me and we'll be back to finish up. Okay, so welcome back. Um, I finished up coloring um, the, the birds. And one of the things that, if you notice in the real one, it has this kind of crook here. So if you used a bamboo skewer, you're not gonna be able to do this, but if you used wire, you certainly can. And that is to give it that turn there. And that helps this stick out and this one stick out. We go. Okay, so we're going to make some leaves. So I've got a little bit of um, strips of, of a doublet um, and I've got some wires and we want this to be pretty strong. Um, so, you know, I think we might even add one more wire to this one more by the time we're done. But you want it to be about the same height as your um, your bird, maybe just a little lower so that when you put them in a vase, they... The birds are what sticks out. You can always cut them later, remember. So I'm going to take a pretty long piece of doublet. And I'm going to put some glue. And again, it doesn't matter which side is out. We're going to cover this up one more time. So once or twice more anyway. I 
don't know why I keep having a hard time with this. I think because there's a big old blob of glue in there. Okay. Oh, the things that plague us, right? So I'm going to start with one of these wires and I'm going to start putting, I'm just going to start wrapping it. And I'm going to come down just a few inches and I'm going to put the second one here. I'm going to do that. And I think I'm going to add in one more, too. Oh, that's pretty stiff. Okay, I need another piece. And then just keep going. And then I'm going to come back the same way, just keep wrapping. So that's our wire. And I've got some, um, this isn't enough. I've got some doublet here, it's the fern and moss. And I'm gonna create a couple of leaves. So I'm gonna just take two pieces of, I'm just gonna take it and fold it on itself. And these are kind of long and skinny. So I would, grab my ruler, I would maybe um, make this about six inches wide, just like that. Okay, so I've got a piece, two pieces together. Now, the reason I like doing it this way is every time you're gonna make sure that you have them right if you fold it on itself and do this. So that both sides of the leaf are the same. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut here. So I have two pieces. So I want the same colors together. See? Now I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna cut this along the diagonal. You know how to do this. We've done this a gazillion times. And what you might wanna do, I'm gonna Mod Podge this after I make it, but you can Mod Podge it before or after. It's entirely up to you. Of course, I didn't cut this very well. And this one, I did a terrible job. <laughs> See, everybody's human, we all make mistakes. Okay. So, I'm gonna want the green side out. So I'm going to laminate these so that it's like this. And I'm gonna give it a fair amount of um, overlap there. And I'm going to use a little bit of this extreme glue to do this. Because um, I really want it to grab. And I'm just going to put in just a little along that seam. Okay. And I'm just going to lay this one on top. set it aside to dry. So now we have the other one. And I did the same thing. I did a really terrible job here on cutting this. We'll fix most of it when we, ah, making a mess. We'll fix most of this when we trim up the leaf. I like keeping my mistakes in because then you know everybody makes mistakes. Okay, so. I've got the greens going this way, the chevron technique, and I wanna overlap them like that. So I'm gonna put glue here on this edge. By the way, if you get this on your table, which you know I will, 
um, alcohol, I swear by it, I've told you this before, I think, um, that alcohol picks up everything. It's my go-to around the house, quite frankly. Okay, so. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna shape my leaf while it's in this form. Then both sides will be the same. Um, so the leaf of a, of a bird of paradise is kind of elongated. Um, I did this one, but this one is a little wide. I think it should be a little narrower. And I did Mod Podge that one after I made it. So I'm going to just cut a little narrower than that one that I had there. And then I'm going to come in here and cut this one like that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Move this out of the way. Get this off my table. And we, we can um, fix this up later if we want to adjust anything on it. Okay. You can see here that I... Okay, so we're going to open this up. I'm going to fold this over about three quarters of an inch on itself. one as well. I don't think I have any glue here. Yeah. And fold this one over on itself. Obviously I'm going to this one a little bit. This one's going to be a little narrower because I didn't realize I had that issue there. So let's just fix it because we can. There. Voila. Okay. So we have these. And the first things I'm going to do is cut off these tails. This one I laminated, um, but I'm not really happy with the way it came out, but you can certainly laminate it. We're gonna try it this way, see how it works. So we're gonna cut this tails out, okay? So we have two and we have wire for one. So we are gonna take this wire and we are gonna sandwich it right in there like that. So I'm gonna put a fair amount of glue Oops, a fair amount of glue here. And we're going to put our wire in here. We're going to fix this later. And what we want to do is get this sandwiched in there really tight. You might need to come in and add a little more glue. Same thing here. I want to create a ridge here. Move this over a little bit. So this is about the right size. And I'm really not happy with the way that 
went. So let's try again. I really like it to be a little more centered. So let's try one more time. I've got two cloth covered heavy duty. I'm to get these right. There we go. Cloth covered green. I think these are 16 gauge um, wires. And we're gonna laminate them together like we just did. Or wire them, tape them together. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay, we'll start wrapping it. Come down a couple of inches. Add in the second one, and then wrap it the rest of the way. off and just keep going. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap it back this way. Just keep going. So we're gonna do what we did before. And I like keeping my mistakes, you know. A lot of people I think would just turn off the camera and start over, but I think that you learn, I know I do, when I see, you know, the mistake. Sometimes that's what it takes to say, aha, and then you'll have your aha moment. Okay, so we're doing this nice amount of blue, especially right along here where the wire's going. Take this and we're gonna sandwich it right in there. So this would be a great time to Mod Podge this. So I'm gonna put the camera on hold and um, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we're back. So I've got some Mod Podge and this is the um, the glossy one. I really love the glossy one on leaves myself. And I got this foam brush and we're just gonna go with a light coating of the Mod Podge. 
You don't want to go crazy with it. And after we do this, we will pause again to allow this to dry. And um, I'll probably make a couple more of these leaves. Use the time for that. There we go. And I'll let this go right up. There we go. There. So just a really light coat. Set it. I have a silicon mat here, a rubber back silicon mat. I love these. They're great. Nothing sticks to them because silicon. But um, don't do your um, alcohol markers on it. That will not come up. Um, I use a glass mat for my alcohol markers. So um, we'll just let this dry and um, we'll come back and I'll show you. How okay, so we are back. And um, I took these outside to let them dry. And so we're going to finish these up. First, th first thing, I'm going to just round off this edge here just a little bit. So this could be like our final shaping of this. Okay. And um, if you look at a Bear to Paradise, the leaves are actually kind of close to a, a banana. They have these marks on them. So I'm going to grab something that I can do that with. And you could do it with a wire, you could do it with the back of a brush, you could use it with a stylus. A stylus might be a good idea. There we go. And um, with the Mod Podge, it's going to um, give it a nice effect. So we're just going to start doing that. And we're going to go, oh, that's not, I'd like it to be more color than that. So let's try, let's see if we can break down the paper. Okay, we're going to come in and color this a little bit. So we're going to go. Get these marks in. This will be working better. And do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Okay. So let's grab um, some mo some colors here. And I'll just grab my palette because I think I'm going to want to put a little more green in there. And um, I gotta see if I can clean this brush off. Well, that'll work fine. So we're gonna come in and we're gonna add in some color. And we're not seeing those. So I think I'm gonna come in with a chalk marker and make those lines. Some of these have a little variation on them. So let me grab a chalk marker. Give it a good shake. I'm going to try it on the back of this just for, let's see if I got a scrap here. There's just a scrap. Yeah, this is going to work great, okay? So we're just going to go. Then we're going to put some color on top of that and let it give just a minute to dry. Ooh, I smeared it. <laughs> I guess I need to give it a little more time to dry. So I'm just going to color this here and I'll add some more. So we'll let that dry for a while. And we're going to do this one as well. So I'll just start. Actually did a total of three. 
This one's not quite dry yet. So we're going to come back in and color this one some more, but I'm just going to show you some of the things we're going to do to finish it off. Um, these leaves all have like the edges curl under. So we're going to create that effect just by using the back of your scissors. This one, we're going to take off that pointy edge on the top. Okay, do the same thing here. Now, I'm going to try this, make sure this is dry. It is okay. So I'm going to come in here with a little more color. And it's just going to mute that chalk a little bit. Okay. And then these leaves have a tendency to kind of go like that. So I'm just going to go... There you have it. Um, we've already finished this off, but I'd like to make it a little thicker. So um, we can do that. Let's add some more color into this one. And you know, in nature, nothing's a solid color. It's variations of everything, right? So. I get a lot down, down the middle here. Okay, we'll do the same thing with this one, although this one's less dry, so I'm not going to mess with it right now. There we go. So we'll just let that one dry a little more. So we've got these two. Move everything out of the way. I'm going to get a scrap of doublette. Just start building this up a little bit. When you get to the end, I just go up and then I come right back down again. That finishes it off nicely. A little glue here. Get that nice and secure. So let's grab one of our Just anywhere you want, or you could just keep them separate. But we have our bird of paradise and our leaf together. 
So thanks so much for joining me. I'll come back in and do a recap for you and show everything as, as it's finished up. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And thanks so much for joining us on The Paper Florist. So that's a wrap. We finished our Birds of Paradise. I think it came out super. I'm really pleased with it, and I'm sure you are as well. We can't wait to see yours. So if you do make this, don't forget to tag Jerry and myself on social media, as well as the Paper Florist Collective. And don't forget to use the hashtag Paper Flower Challenge. So until next month, when we bring you another beautiful stunner for you to make, we thank you so much for joining us on the Paper Florists.